Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping us a link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse. 2.0 and subscribe and enjoy our weekly content we've got a podcast called diving in with funny and jesse and we have some amazing conversations you guys don't want to miss you can find us on itunes spotify podbean this channel or the second youtube channel for the visual and we've got a patreon we've got a patreon called funny and jesse and you guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate so yeah today i'm going to be reacting to the top to the 10 surprising differences between Islam and Christianity. I thought we've already done this video before, but then if you have not, here I am doing it again. I mean, doing it. Not doing it again, but doing it. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. People just want to know, what's the big difference anyways? Aren't they the same exact thing? Whether Allah and the God of Christianity are the same. We believe as monotheists that there is only one God. But is that one God the Islamic conception or the Christian conception? Hey guys, what's happening? My name is Leroy Kenton and welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. Now, I've done a similar video to this in the past. However, we're revisiting some of our previous topics and sharing them as part of our 10 facts series theme. Just to make the episodes a little bit more simple and easy to follow. So, I'm starting off with the first major difference. At number 10, we have the main beliefs. So, Christianity is made up of people who believe in the deity Jesus Christ. Christians, generally speaking, believe Jesus is the Son who walked on earth as the incarnate form of God, the Father. In other words, Jesus is God in human flesh. Islam is made up of individuals who believe in the deity Allah, the Arabic word that represents the Supreme God, whose teachings are believed to be recorded word for word by God's last prophet, Muhammad. Now at number nine, I wanna look at the meaning of the names. What does Christian mean? What does Muslim mean? So for Christian to start off, it's a believer in Christianity who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, very simple. For Islam, Islam means submission to the will of God, and Muslim means one who submits to the will of God. Both the terms Christian and Islam are viewed by the followers of each of the faiths to represent how human beings should actually live on planet Earth. Christians believe that by following the teachings of Jesus and believing in him that they are carrying out the will of God by default. Muslims, however, do not hold Jesus in the same regard as Christians, which I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but they believe that the will of God is found through Islam as shared in the Quran. At number eight is the population. Islam is currently the second largest religion in the entire world after Christianity. The current global population of Christianity is 2.3 billion followers, which is 31% of the total population of the world. Islam sits at 1.8 billion followers, which works out to be approximately 24% of the global population. So not too much of a gap between these two religions in terms of total population, yet Islam is growing faster than Christianity, and estimates suggest that Islam is going to be the largest religion in the the entire world by the year 2070, so about 50 years from now. The next difference is the year they were formed. They weren't actually formed anywhere near the same time. Islam was formed between 610 and 622 CE. There have been some concerns about the accuracies of the dates, but most historians and scholars are in agreement that Islam originated in Mecca and Medina in the early parts of the 7th century CE. Around this time, the first revealed verses of the Quran, which were the first five verses of the Surah Al-Alaq, was sent by God to the Prophet Muhammad in the cave of Mount Hira. Muslims believe the angel Gabriel brought the words to the Prophet directly from God. When it comes to Christianity, that was established as an organized religion between 28 to 33 CE, hundreds of years before Islam. After the passing and the resurrection of Jesus, according to Christian theology, Christianity began to spread as a Jewish sect throughout the Roman Empire. From the teachings of Jesus, Christianity then spread across the world. Some of the beliefs were adopted by the Roman Empire and Christianity became the state religion. 
Now the next thing I want to take a look at real quick is the holidays. So what are some of the different holidays that these two religions celebrate? They're completely different. So for Christianity, there's Christmas, of course, which celebrates the birth of Jesus. And it's probably one of the biggest holidays in the world in general, even for people who aren't Christian. There's also a Good Friday, and also depending on the denomination of Christianity, Sunday or Saturday is viewed as the day of rest, aka the Sabbath. There's also Easter, and then Lent in Catholicism is a season of 40 days, not counting Sundays, which begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday, and various other saint feast days. For Islam, they have Ramadan, which is the month of fasting. Then there's Eid al-Adha, which is the feast of sacrifice. And then Eid al-Fatir, which is a festival at the end of Ramadan. They also have different places of worship. Christianity has churches, chapels, cathedrals, basilicas, as well as homes, and as well as any other living space. Many Christians don't even view going to a traditional place of worship as necessary because of a biblical text found in Matthew 8, verse 20 that says, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. In Islam, Muslims worship in mosques or masjids, community prayer halls, as well as any other place that is considered clean by Islamic standards. Now what these religions use as scripture is also different. The holy book in Christianity, of course, is the Bible and it's said to be the inspired word of God. And this means different things to different people, but basically it means that Christians believe that the books that make up the Bible were written by many people over a 1500 year period and those people were guided by the spirit of God through divine inspiration. These writings came in the form of poetry, songs, stories, as well as genealogies where we see people personal expression working hand in hand with God. For the Quran, it's completely different. On the other hand, it's said to be the word of God dictated to Muhammad and written down word for word without any personal expression of any human added to it at all. The truest reading of the Quran has to be in the original Arabic form because translating into different languages can also take away from the interpretation of the Quran. Now at number three, we have salvation. This is a big difference as well. Islam teaches salvation based Based on working to achieve it. A Muslim must keep the five pillars of Islam, confess the Shahada, which is there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. They also must kneel in prayer towards Mecca five times a day. Muslims also need to fast during the daylight hours of the month of Ramadan and they give money to the poor as well as the last pillar is to make a pilgrimage to Mecca at one point in their life. Islam teaches that the day of judgment will involve people's good deeds and bad deeds being weighed in a balance and your judgment is going to be paid to you whether it's good or bad. Instead of Christianity, Christianity teaches that people are saved by grace, which is a gift if they believe in Jesus, that he died for their sins and resurrected. All right, the next big difference is the Trinity. So the Trinity or the Godhead is a core belief of Christianity that says that there is one God who has three manifestations, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kind of like a corporation. I know I use this example a lot, but a corporation may have three founders, but they have different roles under the umbrella of the same corporation. Muslims, however, believe that they practice pure monotheism that is not affected by concepts like the Trinity, which say that God is three, but somehow one. The core belief of Islam is that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. So Muslims view their view of God as a much more simple view than Christianity. And the biggest difference and often the most debated topic between these two religions is who Jesus actually is. Is. Islam accepts that Jesus of Nazareth did in fact exist and that he was born of the Virgin Mary. But Islam also believes that Jesus was simply another prophet equal to previous prophets like Abraham and Moses. Muslims believe that Muhammad is a final messenger and is superior to all other previous prophets that came before him. Christians believe that Jesus is the son of God which makes him equal to God and before he came to earth as a man, he is accepted to be the second person of the Trinity or the word of God as another title that he's given who became flesh and lived on earth. Islam doesn't believe in the idea that Jesus was crucified on the cross. They believe that God spared him from it. 
For Christians, the sacrifice that God made by sacrificing his son for the sins of humanity is the focal point of their faith and without that act, the world would be completely doomed and helpless in sin forever. All right guys, so those were 10 differences between Christianity and Islam and I want to know what are some other differences or even some similarities that you know about that I left out in this episode that you wish I may have mentioned. Sound off down below in the comments section. And guys, when you leave your comments down below, be as respectful as possible. I know oftentimes when we discuss religion, people get a little bit heated, things might get a little bit sensitive. So just be real mindful that you're actually commenting like comments that actually contribute to a conversation versus just venting and throwing hate down below like I hate seeing that that's not what FTD facts is about let's learn let's grow let's expand our knowledge and move forward to help make the world a better place as a Muslim uh, living with the Christians help me to understand my religion better. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Okay, so I'm gonna be heading out now, but before I go, don't forget to check out another episode that I have for you right here where you can learn a lot more about not just religions, but different places all around the world. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with the latest episodes here on FTD Facts, and shoot me a line on social media as well. Those links are down below. Okay guys, I'll see y'all real soon. I thought I reacted to these, but I guess this was new information to me and very interesting. I like the part, I like the last part of the video where he's talking about respectful comments. If you're going to contribute, let it be something that someone is going to learn from and about the conversation, not insulting people. <laughs> These were very interesting facts and a big shout out to the person that suggested this, always learning new things. Although I think by now some of us should know some of these things. So if there's something else like this that you want us to react to, let us know by dropping us something in the comment section below and we'll do it for you. I hope you guys have a nice day and I'll see you in my next reaction video.